Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whenever you are. Don't panic, it's Mike. It's March 20th, 2010. A few of the news stories this week. The first one, of course, was that uh, Britain recorded a small increase in, um, in those no longer claiming unemployment and those in employment increased slightly. However, what they didn't mention or highlight in any particular way, record numbers leave workforce. More than one in four adults in Britain are not working after a record number left the workforce in recent mo months. A record 149,000 left the workforce and became, quote, economically inactive. I think that would include me because I um, am technically unemployed in the UK but I've never bothered to go off to the job center to claim benefits. I wonder why. Now, <clears throat> uh, basically saying, uh, the report basically came out saying that unemployment fell by uh, 33,000 to hit 2.45 million. However, a total of 10.6 million people either did not have a job or have stopped looking for one. And in fact, uh, roughly 99,000 have gone off and entered further education. So uh, students recently graduating from what would technically be um, high school in uh, North America, uh, I've decided that uh, rather than finding a job, they're going to go to university, sensible thing to do, <clears throat> or uh, indeed those who have graduated university courses are going on to uh, different courses or to higher levels of education, rather than face the dole queue. Things are not quite as rosy as they would like them to be. Other news over in Europe, markets spooked as Greek rescue plan crumbles. Ambrose Evans Pritchard having a go again uh, at the big mess <coughs> that is the Greek crisis. Now, what's been happening recently? Okay, so the Germans have basically said, we're not going to give them any money. They should go talk to the IMF. <laughs> the IMF, uh, by the way, a former member of the IMF uh, last month, came out and uh, predicted that indeed the IMF would be called in <coughs> sometime in April or May potentially as late as June, to sort out the mess in Greece. Well, it, f it would appear that the European rescue plan is falling to pieces. The Germans aren't really getting on bandwagon here, even if French and Spanish newspapers are saying everything is glorious with the plan. Now, <clears throat> uh, some of the quotes in here are quite funny. Uh, <clears throat> essentially along the lines of uh, sources in Washington say Greece can now can expect to borrow from the IMF at around 3.25% interest. While the EU has not specified its own terms, the Eurogroup said this week that any help that would come would come at a punitive rate above the borrowing cost for other EU states, suggesting a rate of 4 to 5 percent. So if the Europeans were indeed to bail out the Greeks, they'd be charging them twice the interest that the IMF would. Go figure, they're going to go talk to the IMF. Now what's that going to do to the value of the Euro? If the Euro land cannot sort out the Greek mess and must call upon the International Monetary Fund. Hmm, I think the euro is going to have a little bit of a bump. However, over here in the UK, pound falls as investors worry about budget giveaways. Um, yeah, the pound is uh, going up and down like a, um, well, I won't use the term that's used in Britain. Um, <laughs> it's bouncing around like um, yeah, crazy because nobody's quite sure what's going to happen with the budget and the upcoming election. Now, there's a budget coming out next week um, that uh, reportedly may include some giveaways from the Labour government to uh, make their chances of re-election a little higher. We shall see. More than likely, we will end up with a minority government of one sort or the other, Labour or Conservative, <coughs> and the markets will not like that. And so goes Great Britain. Great Britain stars in its own Greek tragedy, from the Spiegel, uh, Spiegel Online International. <clears throat> Greek's budget deficit is impossibly high, but Great Brit Britain's is even higher. <clears throat> the coming costs will be painful. Yes, indeed. Now, um, Gordon Brown and the Labour government, and in fact uh, the Conservative government, are saying they're not going to touch anything to do with health or education if they can help it but they are going to reduce their uh, spending by 5% at least, possibly more. And so if they're not touching <coughs> health care or um, <coughs> law enforcement or schools, everything else is going to have to be cut by at least 10%, if not more. This will be challenging. 
Portugal. Now, um, in my earlier report, I mentioned the concept of pigs, and yes, I know it is offensive to everyone that happens to live in one of these countries. Um, there's an equally uh, offensive term called the stupid, uh, which includes UK <laughs> and Ireland, but anyway, yeah. yeah. Who's next? Uh, well, Portugal might be. Portugal has decided that instead of going for European or EU bonds for the next set of uh, money raising, they're going to go for dollar-denominated bonds. Uh, they're going to go look for $1 billion worth of um, debt, and um, rather than looking for um, uh, Euro debt. This could be interesting. Now, Portugal may get away with this. Um, I think the next big crisis is going to be in Italy before it moves on to the UK. Uh, the, the Italian government is, of course, equally as corrupt as the Greek government. We shall see. Do you think uh, America and Canada are out of the woods? Well, Canada definitely isn't. I've included a link here to um, <clears throat> americacanadablogspot.com, an article that came out last week, uh, rather a week ago. Um, the country of fiscal prudence, Canada, the land of the strong and free, the land of fiscal prudence, our um, Canadian leaders would like to tell us. Uh, some interesting graphs on this page <clears throat> about the amount of credit card balances, how they've increased in the last 10 years, uh, residential mortgages, how much that's increased, personal lines of credit, how much that's increased, and household credit. Um, looks like quite a bubble ready to be burst. We thought Canada was out of the woods, didn't we? No, not even close. Now, two stories here on China. China's Politburo, spoiling for a showdown with America, question mark, from Ambrose Evans Pritchard again. <clears throat> now basically saying that uh, China, uh, the China, Chinese political elite, are trying to figure out ways of screwing the Americans. Now, equally interesting, Paul Krugman, in an article by Jeremy Warmer, uh, Warner, has uh, reported that uh, he would like to see a trade war start with China. He'd basically like to impose a 25% tariff on everything coming from China in an attempt to get the Chinese to devalue the yuan. Mm, I don't think it'll work. I think the Chinese will tell them where to shove it. Um, <clears throat> now, the article basically goes on to uh, say that this could be one of the most uh, <clears throat> difficult things, you, or the most insane things you could do in a particular time in the world economy. And the protectionism and the effect of this protectionism on the world economy would be quite disastrous and would also have a nasty, really negative effect on America. We shall see. Equally interesting, Chinese high-tech companies are starting to gobble up U.S. citizens. They're basically taking uh, a lot of U.S.-based um, researchers, um, Americans and Chinese who moved over, back to China. So, uh, U.S. thinking that uh, high-tech is going to rescue them may be in for quite a surprise. A lot of Chinese companies are now doing high-tech. <clears throat> Linked here, an uh, article from a uh, blog site, The Daily Bell. Now, this was sent to me, uh, <clears throat> Newsweek, an article in Newsweek, U.S. in terminal decline. Now, I won't go through this article in great detail, but I will link uh, the original source articles from New Newsweek. The troubles. Declinists have always projected America's imminent demise. For a change, they're on to something. And, of course, the uh, source article for all of this <clears throat> from Neil Ferguson in um, the Foreign Affairs magazine. Now, I've included the link to the article. Uh, there's a free registration there, so you can go read the entire article. It is six pages long, and there's a lot of big words. Um, but for those of you that would like to understand what Neil Ferguson thinks about the current, current situation, um, <clears throat> it's uh, quite an interesting read. Finally, a couple stories on food and um, <laughs> bioagriculture. All that nonsense, big agra. <clears throat> Berkeley scientists' herbicide study raises corporate hackles. Uh, there's a new study out of Berkeley University uh, basically saying that uh, one of the um, herbicides that's used quite predominantly in corn production in the States, uh, atrazine, causes some rather bizarre effects in um, developing frogs. Uh, effectively, um, <coughs> there's too much estrogen in these frogs, and they turn out to be uh, uh, more female than male, effectively. So the male population is declining when 
exposed to atrazine. Now the response from <coughs> the attacker, or sorry, the attacked company, uh, <coughs> Syngenta, which is a UK based company, is uh, interesting and included in the article. Although they didn't go on to say very much other than to say everything's been tested, why is people saying these things? Uh -huh. <laughs> I've included a link to uh, <coughs> Syngenta's GE corn. GE corn causes concern. There's apparently a genetically engineered corn that Syngenta has been pushing for the last few years, which is <coughs> licensed for use for uh, biofuels fuels only in the States. It's not to be used for human consumption. But we all know how these things work out. Uh, finally, we're not leaving Monsanto out of the mix. Um, study released in Argentina. Now, this is an old story, um, but uh, something I came across uh, recently. Monsanto soy herbicide could pose health risks. Now, of course, uh, the Monsanto people are saying, ah, it's all nonsense, it's all craziness, uh, everything's been tested, I don't know what you're talking about. Now, there's lots of other studies that have uh, also concluded similar results that essentially <coughs> uh, a high exposure to uh, Roundup, or Roundup Ready, as it's called in various parts of the world. It can cause uh, interesting birth defects, um, um, reproductive problems, hormonal problems, miscarriages, and uh, different types of cancers. Finally, um, a couple of happy things. Now, of course, my, uh, my little vlog here is called Don't Panic. Um, it was sort of a silly name I came up with. Apparently there's been a number of posters coming out recently. Of course you have the uh, Carry On Keep Calm posters, which were originally designed <clears throat> at the end of World War II in case things got really bad in Britain. Um, and they're selling like gangbusters now. You can even get them in Canada. There's also <laughs> some new spin-off ones. Now panic and freak out! Um, I've included a link to the poster if you wish to go purchase this. You can also get it on mugs and things carried around the office. Uh, some funny videos just for a laugh. DJ Granny takes Paris nightclubs by storm. Uh, this is the story of a 69-year-old uh, pensioner called Ruth Flowers, who is apparently really hitting it up big on the DJ scene in Paris. And finally, a song I first heard last this week, or rather last week, Pearl Jam. Um, and <coughs> an acoustic song. Uh, from their latest album called Just Breathe. Peace, love, understanding, think about things. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.